Welcome back to Short Time with Vin and Dave, Vin Ebenu, Dave Crossan with you here in hour number two on our Mother's Day episode of Short Time with Vin and Dave on 94.3 The Point and 105.7 The Hawk. And Dave, we're trying to atone for our financial wrongdoings oh, yeah. here. Okay. Testify, Oi. Brother Dave, the financial wake-up call we need. Buddy, I'm doing my stretching. Oh. I'm ready. Oh, this one's going to be here intense. Here we go. Now, I'm going to tell you this. All right. This is going to be the show uh-huh. that when we get on stage and we win the award and they talk about the best <laughs> financial segment, they're going to pull us up. We're going to get that award and this is going to be it. The financial this award. Is it. Boom, this there is the it show. is. This is the show. Brace yourselves, Are people. Are you ready? Lay it on me, Dave. All right, here it is. Here we go. So I love listening to different conversations with clients and people who actually listen to the show about different ideas. What is going on in their world? Sure. Different things that they are considering. So I received a call from a listener. All How right. Nice is that? Yeah, there we go. Vicky from Bedminster reached out to me and she said, David, she enjoys listening to the show, but she has a question. She's concerned about the stock market, everything that's going on. Sure. She's contributing to her 401k. And her concern is the limited options. Because, you know, with a 401k, it's a great place. And I tell this to people all the time. When you're contributing to your 401k, if your company is matching, make sure you contribute at least up to that amount. Because if not, you're leaving money on the table. We don't want to do that then. We do not want to do that. That's a no-no. Here's the issue. All right. With the volatility of the market, her concern is with the option she has in the 401k, what can she do? Is that it? Is there anything else she can do with her money? Consider the fact she is still working. Ah. So I said, Vicki, let's talk about this. I said, all right, here's the situation. You may qualify for what is called an in-service non-hardship distribution. And then you're looking at me and you're asking me, what is that? Well, I'm going to uh-huh. tell you what Inquiring that is. Inquiring minds want to there know. There it is. Okay. So again, this is something you have to check with your plan administrator to okay. see if you're company will allow you to do this. And the other driving factor is your age. Depending on your age, 59 and a half is the key age to be able to do something like this. Ah. But for a lot of people, they work well beyond 59 and a half. Sure. And, you know, it might be a situation where, again, with this volatility of the market, what are their options? If Vicky qualifies, and again, has to check with her plan administrator, right? she may be able to take a portion of her 401k while she is working and move it to a traditional IRA. Ah. So you look at me, Vin, and you're like, so what? What does there that is mean? Hope. Well, what does that do for Vicky in this oh, case? Yes. Okay, here's what it does. All right. When you are, you can move money to a traditional IRA, it opens up the door to a lot more options. Mm. Individual stocks, different mutual funds, annuities, bonds, ETFs. I, I've got more. Look at this list. <laughs> oh it's boy. right here. Look here at that we list. go. <laughs> and for somebody that's concerned about the market, it provides other opportunities to be able to put something, say they want something a little bit more safe. They want to invest in areas that they can't with their 401k. Here's the other one. Uh-huh. Typically with a 401k, when you have questions about your investments, what do you do? You call an 800 number. You may not speak to the same person. You ask questions. They give general information. They basically say, (laughs) okay, here's this fund. Here's that fund. Here's based on your age, different things you can do and how you can invest. Uh Uh-huh. But now, let's say you're able to move this money over to a 401, I'm from a 401k to a traditional IRA. Right. You can tap into a financial advisor, an advisor that can help you with your investments. So think about that. Now here's a situation where she can move her money to a traditional IRA and have a lot more options. And if she's looking to have her, her financial advisor help her, right now the opportunity is to do so. So let's go through the mechanics, shall we? Let's do it. We shall. All right. Okay. So what would need to happen is with a 401k, you would call the plan administrator and say, do I qualify for an in-service non-hardship? Consider what I said, non-hardship. There isn't a hardship here. Okay. It's simply the ability to roll it, like roll it over. Roll it on in. Roll it over, move it over, (laughs) move it over, right? It's not going to be taxable. Okay. That's important because consider this, with a 401k, this is money that there have been contributions matching from the employer if the if the employer does match sure it's all pre-tax money 
pretense. Ah. Okay. All right. Now we want to make sure we can move this money over to a traditional IRA. Okay. It's not taxable. It doesn't trigger a taxable event. It's very important. Interesting. There you go. So now we're able to do this. We haven't paid any tax. It okay. moved over point A to point B. Boom to boom. There we go. Okay. Straight line. So now there it is. Nice and clean. <laughs> so now once it's there, assuming again, talk to your plan administrator that you can do this, then that money can be invested based on what the traditional IRA offers. And let me tell you something. Typically with a 401k, you may have a handful, you know, 10, 20 different options. Now, let's say somebody wants to invest in individual stocks, wants to go with certain mutual funds, certain sectors. Maybe we're looking at the market a different way. Like, you know what? The market has come back, but there are certain sectors and investments that have gone down. There's mm. opportunities. But in the 401k, I don't have the ability to invest that way. Ah. Now, with the traditional IRA, there are so many options, so many, that if you're looking for somebody to also help you, okay. a financial advisor, now they're able to help you with this portfolio. Where again, with a 401k, typically it's that 800 number call, you speak to somebody, get general information. Now with the traditional IRA, you have the ability to do all these different investments. Now keep in mind, with making this move from a traditional to a traditional IRA, you still have that tax benefit of it being pre-tax. If you're past the age of 59 and a half, okay. that's the key age. Right. You could then, if you decided to do so, do a distribution and you're only going to pay the income tax. Any distributions prior to age 59 and a half, the IRS says, not so fast. Ah. And they say, we want a 10% penalty. Mm. We don't want that. No, nobody wants want that. that. Nobody wants that. <laughs> the other thing, too, that works is once you do that distribution, and again, you invest how you want to invest, it gives you that extra flexibility. Okay. Okay. Now, what if you don't want to take a distribution and you simply want to just grow this money tax deferred? Sure. What's wrong with that? Yeah, why not? The key age now that you're forced to take a distribution, that the IRS is saying, hey, you need to start taking distributions at this age, or we're going to penalize you, is age now 72. Oh. It used to be 70 and a half. Interesting. So here's what happens at that age. You get to 72, all right? There is a certain percentage that you need to take out, or the IRS will penalize you. So let's make up some numbers, shall okay. we? We shall. Why not? Let's say you're age 72, all right? And we do the calculation, and you need to take out $10,000. Because okay. again, why is this happening? Sure. The IRS wants to start taxing that money because well. it's all pre-tax <laughs> money, yeah. deferred taxation. They now want to start that taxation process. But let's say you don't do that distribution. Right. That's not good. Why is that not good? I'm going to tell you. Please. Here you go. That $10,000, that's the example we'll use today. Okay. 50% penalty if you don't do that distribution. I'm pounding the desk today. I'm uh, fired up. Yeah, I mean, I'd be fired up too at that rate. 50% penalty. 50% <laughs> penalty. That's, that's terrible. It's hefty. Yeah. So where am I going with this? I have no idea. No, here's where I'm going with this. <laughs> you it's, always circle back though. Exactly. It's the flexibility. It's the ability to have, if again, the plan administrator says it's a possibility to move that money over Number one, you have more investment options, choices for people that are concerned about the market. And let's be honest, we're seeing the market. It's up, yeah, it's down, it's yeah. sideways. We're seeing interest rates go up. Maybe we want certain hedges or different protections that we just can't get in the 401k. Right. Maybe also too, somebody like me, myself and I, you want a financial <laughs> advisor to help you with these assets. Maybe, and we talk about this a lot, Vin, People have other 401ks that are out there from different employers. They just left a job. And right now, what do they call this now? The great resignation for a lot of people that have changed jobs during this pandemic. People have started mm. their own businesses. They left this firm. They've gone to another firm and they've left the, these 401ks out there. Here's an opportunity now that maybe we take other 401ks from other jobs ah. to consolidate. Okay. Consolidate. So why do I think that's important? Number one, control. I like to control. Sure. Control your money. Yeah. 
do me a favor. When you get your statements from previous 401ks, what do people do? They put it in the drawer. <laughs> they do. <laughs> it's a natural, natural habit. And then they look at it when habit. the market goes down. When the market's going up, people don't typically look at it. And then all of a sudden, they're like, whoa, what happened? Why wasn't I on top of this? Right. The other thing, Vin, is overlap. People, when they have multiple accounts that they're not keeping an eye on, they're not making sure that there may be areas that they're they're not diversified. They're overlapped in certain areas where, again, if they had all the accounts where it was something where a financial advisor was helping them, mm -hmm. they could help them properly diversify, especially in the market that we're dealing with or any market. You should be properly diversified to make sure that you're set up in a way also to evaluate your risk tolerance, also your time horizon. As you get older, what happens? Well, we're thinking about retirement. How should we be invested? Should be maybe be less in stocks, more toward fixed income or bonds? Again, this is a general conversation. That's right, a conversation right. you want to have a, with your advisor. But with that being said, this was something I wanted to bring up. It was a great question. And it's something where a lot of people don't even know it exists. They figure, you know what? I have a 401k as long as I'm with the company. I can't change it or move it other than what's within the actual 401k to invest in. This may provide an opportunity for people to diversify by going to a traditional IRA and have more choices and to be able to have a financial advisor help them with investing these assets. And I can't drop the mic because the mic is hanging. I can't yeah, drop it. Can I pick it up and drop it? be frowned upon in this establishment. All right. All right. <laughs> and that's it. Again, what is it called? In-service distribution or in-service non-hardship distribution. There it Speak is. Speak to your plan administrator. And I leave it at that. Boom. That's where I'm going. That's it. That's all I got. That's, That's it. a nice finish line. All right. There we go. A little financial wake-up call here on Mother's Day. A nice refreshing look at the world of finances. Dave, people can reach the show anytime, short time at townsquaremedia.com. Where can they reach you at Shoreline Wealth Management? Notice I'm holding my card because last time I think I <laughs> gave out my cell phone number. He doesn't want to forget the wrong number. <laughs> exactly. That's great, isn't it? All right. Let's go to the office, shall we? We shall. Why not? 732 902-7880. Of course, you can always go to shorelinewealth.com. Always. We have an office in Manchester in Manahawkin. Thank you, Vin. Dave, as thanks always. as always for that there financial wake-up call. We got a little more going on here in hour number two. The founder of Infinite Love for Kids Fighting Cancer, a Middletown mom here on Mother's Day here helping other kids with, who are battling cancer and their families as well. Her story coming up next. More short time with Vin and Dave on the way here on 94.3 The Point and 105.7 The Hawk. Contributions to a traditional IRA may be tax deductible in the contribution year. With current income tax due at withdrawal, withdrawals prior to age 59 and a half may result in a 10% IRS penalty tax in addition to current income tax. This information is not intended to be a substitute for specific individualized tax advice. We suggest that you discuss your specific tax issues with a qualified tax advisor. There is no guarantee that a diversified portfolio will enhance overall returns or outperform a non-diversified portfolio. Diversification does not protect against market risk. A plan participant leaving an employer typically has four options and may engage in a combination of these options, each choice offering advantages and disadvantages. Leave the money in his or her former employer's plan if permitted, roll over the assets to his or her new employer's plan if one is available, and rollovers are permitted. Roll over to an IRA or cash out the account value. The opinions voiced in the show are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. This information is not intended to be a substitute for individualized legal advice, please consult your legal advisor regarding your specific situation. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor, member FINRA, SIPC. Whether you are in the early stages of investing, getting ready to retire, or planning your estate, you need a financial planner who will guide you on a clear path with honesty and transparency. Shoreline Wealth Management provides clarity through the complexity. Shoreline's system is straightforward. They will understand your financial circumstances, identify goals, analyze current plans, and customize a path to position you to reach your goals. Shoreline Wealth Management is your financial anchor. Visit ShorelineWealth.com for more information today. ShorelineWealth.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial. Member FINRA. SIPC. Hey, it's Chris Carlin from Rutgers Football and 98.7 ESPN in New York. And you're listening to Short Time with Vin and Dave on 94.3 The Point and 105.7 The Hawk.
These fellas are entertaining. Welcome back to Short Time with Vin and Dave. Vin Avenue, Dave Crossin with you here in hour number two on Mother's Day 2022. Woo! And we've got ourselves a mom from Middletown here with us this morning, Andrea Verdone Gorsigner, the founder of Infinite Love for Kids Fighting Cancer. We're going to get into the nonprofit, all the different events that they do, and how you can help as well along the way this morning. But first, most important thing, happy Mother's happy Day. Happy Mother's <gasps> Day. Thank you so much. <laughs> I can't wait after this. I'm going to head home and enjoy some time with my family and my mom and my mother-in-law. Well have deserved. a nice day. There you, go. Yeah. there you go. So you got two two daughters, uh, Natalie, of course, and Hannah. Yep. Uh, so... Natalie's, remind me of the ages, Natalie's 12, Hannah's 13? You, well, Natalie is going to be 13 in oh, September, okay. Hannah's going to be 15 in June. Oh, so. wow. There you go. Okay. So I, I yeah. all, very nice. <laughs> Almost two official teenagers in the so house. So are you ready wow. for that challenge, yeah. the teenagers? Uh, honestly, like all the cliches, my my kids are the opposite. They're such good kids. They Everybody has their moments, of course, oh, but sure. for the most part, they are really solid young ladies. Very there proud. We go. Proud mama right there. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, Andrea, we wanted to have you in today. Um, oh, certainly. It's it's a great yeah, blessing to have you in here on Mother's Day, so it all works out on Thank that front. You. But to talk about infinite love for kids fighting cancer, something that you've you've founded uh, after after Natalie overcame her battle with uh, leukemia, something that uh, Dave that she battled at just uh, three years old. Yeah. Mm. Um, so happy, healthy. Uh, girl right now so how did what how did that the the foundation come to be how did you come up with this idea after going through it and watching natalie battle battle cancer herself yeah well it, you know it kind of started during her fight because uh, she was diagnosed in august of 2012 with high risk acute lymphoblastic leukemia and you know it turned your world upside down i used to work in publishing in manhattan um had a really demanding job and i went from working full time to never returning to my office again um, when she was diagnosed and throughout her fight um you know within a few months i started learning more and more about childhood cancer and the more i learned the more angry i got because i started discovering that you know our kids only get four percent of the NCI's uh, annual budget, oh, um, wow. and you know some people think, okay, well, I know adult cancers get more funding, but it goes down to the kids, and it, the trickle down effect does not work when it comes to medicine with children because you know their bodies metabolize everything completely differently than adults, and you just can't give them less dosages of certain chemo's. So children need their own you know, uh, forms of treatment. So when I discovered how underfunded um, research was for childhood cancer, and then to find out that there's only been four new drugs developed for any type of childhood cancer hmm. in the past 25 years, That's actually crazy. more than yeah. that at this rate, you know, and for a lot of adult cancers, there tends to be about 900 in the pipeline wow. each year. Okay. Wow. Um, the more and more and more that you learn, <sighs> you're just blown away. Like, how is it that in you know this country this world that this is possible that you have these yeah. kids with these archaic treatments you know and a lot of them end up passing away due to the treatment and they're cancer free at the time because it's just so aggressive so with that um you know and that feeling as a parent that you can't help your child you know here i have this three-year-old who doesn't understand what's happening to her you know we're telling her that these people are helping her yet they're causing her pain so imagine the confusion mm, sure in, yeah. in a toddler trying to understand that you know i i remember moments of you know them the doctors and nurses the wonderful doctors and nurses you know trying to do things for her and i would have to pin her down and she would say to me you know mommy make them stop help me mommy oh. and Ugh, I could still I could yeah. feel that like in my bones, you know, how horrible that was. Um, so I needed something to make me feel empowered, something that made me feel like I was also able to help fight her cancer, even though I couldn't fight what was going on in her body. Um, so that coupled with learning these really sad statistics about childhood cancer research, um, I just on a whim, I you know, this is about, if that was August 2012, this was in April 2013. Okay. I said to my husband, I'm like, you know what? We had a nice following on her Facebook page at that point. It was called Infinite Love for Natalie Grace um, public page. It was 
set up to update family, friends, and just to raise general awareness about childhood cancer. Sure. Um, we had a really nice following after a bit of time, and I said, what if I asked every one of her followers to send us a dollar for research? You know, I wonder how much we could raise. In my mind, I had this grand plan of raising like $10,000. Sure. I'm like, that would be incredible. To yeah, be able to do that while right. she was in active treatment, you know, at the same time, we had to sell our home because I no longer had my paycheck coming in. Right. So, wow. you know, you're dealing with that at the same time. Um, but we did it. I was like, you know what? Let's, we got a P.O. box. We got a separate checking account to keep it separate from our personal finances. I took a picture of Natalie and I. Um, I had someone take a picture of Natalie and I holding a sign I made out construction paper that said, will you send us a dollar for childhood cancer research? And posted it to her Facebook page. And then, you know, shortly after left to pick up Hannah from kindergarten at the time, I came home. I think it was maybe a half an hour later, and it had already been shared over 50 times. It wow. already had right. like, you know, a couple hundred comments and, you know, fast forward a week or so, and it just went completely viral. And That's awesome. Yeah, it was really, really great. We were really surprised and... You know, long long story short, because most of my stories are long. <laughs> <laughs> and we enjoy each and every yes, one of them. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm sorry. I always say it's the Italian in me. This is me trimming it down. Trust me. Um, you know, I, I was like, okay, we need a deadline because I feel like people want to help you get to that goal and to that deadline. Oh, sure. So at that rate, when we saw more money was coming in, we upped our goal to $50,000. And again, since we started in April, I was like, well, September's Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. It also happens to be Natalie's birthday month. So let's make it Natalie's birthday wish, and we'll make it an even 50000 Oh, okay, Honestly, there you go. Honestly, thinking there's no chance we're going to be able to make this happen. It's not like I could hold a fundraiser at that time. It was all, you know, pushing it on her Facebook page, hanging flyers, you know, social media mostly, you know, getting the word out there. And by the end of September, we had raised $110,000. Wow. wow, there you go. Where every single penny went to fund uh, AML research. Not what Natalie had. It's a more aggressive form of leukemia. But um, a friend I had met along the way had recently lost her son at the time to AML, so I wanted to do something in his name. Um, then the rest is history. Once that happened, it was like, okay, this is something we have to keep doing. This isn't okay. a one-and-done thing. Um you know, and Natalie's treatment lasted uh, a little over two years. She finished November um, 2014. Um, and from that point on, we transitioned her Infinite Love page to Infinite Love for Kids Fighting Cancer and just yeah. kept it going. And from that point, we've already given $1.6 million to research. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Um, yeah, to some of our countries, like leading research hospitals and facilities to include MSK. Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, Dana-Farber, um, all over the nation, even funded some research in Italy. Um, oh, wow. That's great. And we've covered almost all types of childhood cancer, and there's 12 major forms of childhood cancer. So we're pretty proud. And then in addition to that, we help families. You know, we get introduced to new families all the time. And, um, you know, whether it's helping them to pay a bill uh, making a wish come true for one of our fighters, even doing special things for siblings because a lot of times they get put back on the back burner. Um, and the families and the parents in general, um, you know, we'll do anything we can to help a family. And if it's kind of above what we can do, we'll reach out to other nonprofits to see if they can help us. We'll find a way to help them. So we're definitely a full service foundation. I always <laughs> say we're small, but we're really mighty and the best part is we are 100% volunteer run. You know, nobody takes a salary. We don't have wow. a brick or mortar location. Our overhead is very low. So everything that comes in, like when people donate, they're getting every bang for their buck. It is going right back out to our families and right back out to research. So we're pretty proud. And you are a 501c3. We are a 501c3. Okay, well, yeah. that's big. I mean, th so obviously yes. the money gets put to good use. It and then for does. the person who's donating, there's the possibility of a tax write-off yep. too. A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we always tell people one-time donations are always appreciated. Beggars can't be choosers, but we're really <laughs> after if you're listening is monthly donors. Um, that is really what keeps us going, especially during the pandemic. Um, I know most people think it's over, but you know, this, uh, one of the events that we're going to talk about later in the next segment uh, is our, she's good at this. She's a natural. <laughs> <laughs> Who is a, uh, a 5k. We called our infinite love Tutu trot. Um, 
And we're always saying that, um, you know, this is the first time we're going to be doing something in person since uh, COVID started. So not having our annual galas and, you know, all our big money makers really, really hurt us. We probably lost in the last couple of years about $800,000. Oh, wow. Um, it hasn't stopped us from helping our families, thank goodness. And we've still been able to donate towards research, not as much as we normally would, but we've been able to do it. Um but monthly donors are what kept us going through COVID because, you know, that was money coming in that we didn't have to, you know, work for in that moment. Sure. Uh, well, I'm glad you brought that up because for a lot of people, when they make donations, they'll do it at the end of the year. And, yeah. the, and then all of a sudden it's like, what about the rest of the year? Right. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, if you're looking to donate to a nonprofit or a charity, whatever that dollar amount is, break it up. Break yes. it up because the nonprofit could use it. Yeah. You know, not everything at the end of a year, you know, those you know, Absolutely. in the summer or whatever. But yeah, I, I'm glad you brought that up. That's so Absolutely. important. Absolutely. And we have donors. We have monthly donors. Some give $5 a month. Some give $100 a month. We have one sponsor, Gore Segner Brothers Hardwood Floors. There that, you go. <laughs> they give $500 a month. Oh, you know, right. there you um, go. And it doesn't matter if it's $5 or if it's $100. Like this whole foundation started because of a single dollar um mm. every dollar matters so if somebody can forfeit their starbucks coffee you know for a week a month out <laughs> of the you, month yeah. that's there you it go is 25 dollars how you there's simple things that we could all do yes that we can all come up with a dollar like yeah, you're yes. about. Think maybe about it. it's five maybe it's ten yes and it matters yeah. you know yeah. it really matters and i appreciate even those those five dollar donations I'll, I'll reach out to some of those people and thank them because sure, i sure. know some of them are struggling and yet they're like you know what i could still do this and they'll always say oh it's not much i'm like it is it adds up and you know, it means a lot to us and it helps. So we're talking with Andre Verdon Gorsigner, the founder of Infinite Love for Kids Fighting Cancer and a Middletown mom. You know, to put into perspective as well, or try to, because obviously you help fund um, or donate funds to, to fund pediatric cancer research. Just how, how expensive is it with, with some of the medical bills or with some of the treatments um, or with, with any pediatric cancer that, that kids are? Are, are battling themselves and then mom and dad are, are you know bringing them to and from doctors just right how costly is this um with with where things are at now with some of the treatments or or mm -hmm. some of the medicines and you, you mentioned you know, sort of the the archaic treatments but with how, where things have been and where things are now just how much of an expense is this to i guess try and put into perspective or, or, or something like yeah. just how much uh, how much these donations are needed right i mean when your child is diagnosed with um, a disease like cancer, I mean, it could be any disease where you suddenly have one parent who has to leave their job. It's not an option to continue working. I don't think a lot of people realize how financially devastating that is because, you know, here we were, my husband and I, feeling like we're doing pretty good in life. You know, we both have really great jobs and we're able to, you know, thankfully support our kids in the way that we want and roof over our head, food on the table, you know, heat, sure, air yeah. conditioning, all that stuff. And then suddenly like that out of nowhere, mm. we're down my salary, you know, and it was a generous salary. So to have that suddenly be gone and then you have to sell your house so you can stay afloat, um, you know, at that alone, that financial difficulty alone, but then add in, you know, um, of course, it's different for all families when it comes right, to insurance, right. you know, what yeah. kind of type of insurance. At the time, we were being covered by my insurance uh, with my publishing company. And, you know, they allowed me to pay COBRA for about six months. But oof, expensive. That was yeah. a huge hit, yeah. considering I no longer had a salary. Um, that it, was like having another mortgage payment and then some. You so know? now you're down one income and now you have the extra expenses. Absolutely. And not just that, you have all the co-pays. Mm. You know, every time your kid is in the hospital, every doctor that walks in that room and you can't say, hey, excuse me, are you necessary in the room? Because I don't want to pay your copay. You know, <laughs> you're paying that doctor's copay, that specialist's right. copay. Mm. Um, you know, we were to a point a few months in where we were getting letters from collectors and our, you know, the the insurance at the time, we were getting bills from doctors and you're looking at all of them and you're like, wait, which one are we paying? Which isn't this the same? Wasn't this from the same thing? We're getting double. It got so overwhelming um, because here you are also trying to 
be with your child. And this is a 24 seven diagnosis. This isn't something you go to an appointment and then you go home and your kid watches TV and plays and you do what you got to do. I mean, this is constant. Um, We were lucky that my mom offered to kind of take over and deal with all that for us. So she Mm. made all of the annoying, horrible calls to battle you know, different bills and to, you know, see mm. what needed That's to be a paid. Point, with it can be confusing. You have all yeah. these different bills extremely, coming in and extremely you know, handling all that. Yep. And then you have things like, you know, uh, one of the medications Natalie had to have, we had to have it uh, condensed into a liquid form. We had to go to one place in North Jersey and, you know, that was like $300 a month. Um, not covered wow. by insurance. Right. You know, there are so many expenses. Uh, we were fortunate. We lived 15 minutes from the hospital Natalie was treated at. She was at Hackensack University Medical Center up in um, up in Hackensack. There you go. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, wait a minute. Up That's in where it is. <laughs> uh, we lived right nearby at the time in, okay. uh, in Rutherford. So we were lucky on our commuting costs. But, oh, my goodness, some of these families, they have to drive an hour or two, like multiple times in the week, just to get to the hospital. Imagine the gas costs, you know. Mm. Imagine the food costs, doing yeah. Uber Eats. Um, you know, there's so many, a lot of these families, they have to get hotel rooms. Um, right. And that's just the tip of it. I mean, I know families who have to fly, you know, who lived in Virginia and had to fly over 130 times to MSK in New York. I mean, there's so many expenses that you just don't think about. So whenever people reach out, hey, my friend's you know, son was diagnosed, what can I do? I'm like, I know you want to do a grand gesture. I know you want to make a basket of toys for this kid or something. I go, you know what, they, they need money. Like unless they're independently wealthy, I guarantee you they're going to need financial help. Sure. So get your friends together, chip in, get gift cards to Uber Eats and to Amazon <laughs> yeah, and to exactly. to all those things. Mm-hmm. I go, I know it's boring, but that's what that's what they're probably gonna need. Yeah. You know, that's another thing Infinite Love does. We actually our website has this amazing platform where we can set up fundraising pages. Oh, there you go. So in addition to our just everyday kind of fundraising, we're able to set up a page for a family that's just for them and they can share it with their families and our foundation will pay for any credit card uh, transaction fees. So the families get 100% of wow. what is donated to them. That's okay. awesome. So, you know, we've raised up to $40,000 for some of our families, um, and it really, really helps kind of That's carry tremendous. them through. Yeah. Andrea, Dave, and I have to go to a break. Do you mind hanging out with us? We I want, would we, love you, to. you gave such a nice tease before about the 2 5 k coming up. We've got to dive into that. Absolutely. <laughs> More short time with Vin and Dave and Infinite Love for Kids Fighting Cancer founder and Middletown mom, Andrea yeah. Verdone Gorsigner, right after this. Hello, this is Chef David Burke. On short time with Vin and Dave on 94.3 The Point and 105.7 The Hawk. And if you could see us, you'd know the three of us have perfect faces for radio. Let's face it, investment concepts and financial planning can be very intimidating and confusing. Shoreline Wealth Management addresses that feeling head on. Their goal is to educate you while offering financial advice without buzzwords and jargon. Shoreline includes you in the process and makes you comfortable every step of the way. Shoreline Wealth Management is your financial anchor. Visit ShorelineWealth.com for more information and start your financial journey with comfort and security today. Shoreline Wealth Management with offices in Manchester and Manahawkin. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA, SIP. PC. Welcome back to Short Time with Vin and Dave. Vin Avenue, Dave Crossan with you. And with us this hour, this morning, is Andrea Verdone Gorsigner, the founder of Infinite Love for Kids Fighting Cancer, based in Middletown, Monmouth County. We've been talking about the foundation a little bit, the nonprofit ways that you can donate, the importance of, of finances on multiple fronts throughout the uh, while a while a child is battling cancer and their families are trying to find ways to bring them to and from doctors here and there, Andrea, I wanted to start this segment just going back to to Natalie's battle uh, with cancer herself. I know, obviously, I can't imagine you know just being three, four, or five years old battling cancer and kind of being confused. You know, what's going on? Why are they doing this to me? Did you see points where Natalie was able to just tr- fight through? any of that pain or confusion and just kind of be, you know, that a happy three, four year old girl? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. One of the things I tell people when, 
you know, grown adults when they're incredibly discouraged or you just hear people complaining about nonsense things. And, and <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, we're all human. We all have those moments. But sure. you know the people I'm talking about yeah. where you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> I just want to say go to a clinic where children are undergoing chemo treatment and get a little inspired by watching these kids because for all that they're going through, <laughs> I mean, they are the most strongest individuals I've ever you know had the luxury of of witnessing and i know that sounds strange um but (laughs) it changes you you know when you see these kids uh, go through what they're doing and still stay so positive and so happy like through the worst of times i mean obviously natalie had her her really bad days you know where she you know, didn't want to get out of bed or was really sick or really off. But for the most part, like every part of her would fight through what she was feeling and want to play with Play-Doh, do another puzzle. <laughs> like their spirit is just undescribed. Like you can't describe it. Um, it's it's really kind of amazing to watch them because I don't know any adults who are as strong as them. So, you know. People would say, oh, you know, you're so strong during the fight. I mean, first of all, no parent has a choice in regards to their strength, because what are you going to do? You're not going right. to yeah. hide yeah, under a rock. You know, it's, it not, yeah. it's not a strength you chose. But at the end of the day, you know, I can't speak for everyone, but I have a funny feeling that I kind of am. But the strength comes from them. I mm. mean, you see them and and your kids go through this and you're just like, Wow. If she can go through this, you know, I can step up and and do my end of it. You know, it's, it's certainly while well, Natalie was betting that, um, I mean, Hannah, not too much older than her. What, what were some of the things that, that you and your husband were uh, trying to tell her about what Natalie was going through with the battle of cancer? I mean, even with Natalie at three, four years old, Hannah, you know, getting into four, five, six years old herself. I mean, yeah. still, that's that's a young mind. And it's kind of like, wait, what's going on with my baby sister? Mm-hmm. How? What were some of the things that, that you told her that helped? And um, especially out there, because I think it could help other parents who are, who are out, out there now who have little kids in that scenario of how do you talk to your kids when one of their siblings, older or younger, is battling cancer? Right. Um, you know, I don't remember us having like a sit down conversation with Hannah at the time because she was in kindergarten. Sure. So, you know, it's kind of like you're going to have conversations that are age appropriate for that child. Um, you know, we we told her that her sister was sick. Um, I think one of the key things was we we never lied about what was going on and we always used correct terminology you know we said cancer and we said methotrexy and all the different you know chemo drugs vincristine because you know one for natalie we wanted to not just say oh this is we're going for yucky medicine we wanted her to know exactly what was going on that day mm. because mm. then since we can't feel what she's feeling right she can slowly start to associate every time mommy says methotrexy i feel this way so you know she could mentally prepare a little bit oh, um and sense. same for hannah because you know she would be able to say oh this is the day she has you know this you know doxorubin Um, So she's going to feel like this for like a week. And we're like, yeah, you know, this Mm. is what's going to happen. So I think it was being as honest as we could with both of them in an age appropriate way where we're not, you know, scaring them. Right. Um, And Hannah is uh, they're both incredible. Hannah (laughs) has always been always before now I was diagnosed a very old soul. So she was always this little mommy to her little sister. Like she they've the two girls have always been best buds again uh, love every child fights every sibling fights <laughs> sure. i'm not trying to <laughs> yeah. sit here and say oh we have this picture perfect situation right but they to this day are incredibly close and you know i think it'll, we really lucked out because in a lot of these situations where you have one child who's extremely ill and you know another healthy child you know people want to constantly give gifts to the sick child i mean natalie got showered with gifts that we ended up <laughs> donating 80 percent to a women's <laughs> shelter because you know, we didn't need that much. She didn't need that much. But instead of being jealous, Hannah would say, do you want me to help you open this? Do you want me? And she couldn't read at the time, but do you want me to read you this book? <laughs> like she, when she knew Natalie didn't feel well, she would sit next to her and rub her back. Um, mm. Yeah. One story I like to share was uh, we had spent a lot of time in the hospital this one particular month and we had finally gotten home. Um, my husband was working. It was just the girls and I. And within 
oh, maybe half an hour of being home where I'm like, okay, I don't want to see the inside of a hospital for like at least a week if possible. Sure. Um, the girls were in the other room. Next thing I know, they're walking into the kitchen and Hannah's holding Natalie's face and I could see blood coming down uh, Natalie's uh, chin. Mm. Here she had a very severe bloody nose and when she was in treatment her bloody noses were scary because mm. oh boy you know, she is um her her blood counts were off so mm. a lot of times she would need transfusions and platelets um but it was there's was really really bleeding and next thing you know she is vomiting and there's blood in her vomit as well oh wow and so of course i'm quickly trying to deal with natalie hannah and again kindergarten without me saying a thing she runs off i don't know where she's going <laughs> She comes back, rubber gloves, cleaner, and new pajamas for Natalie. And oh, then, wow. and she puts them on the counter, and then she rubs Natalie's back and says, "It's okay, mommy's with you. It's okay." Like, oh, mm. we really, really lucked out That's sweet. when it comes to that, because that could have gone a very, very, oh, sure. you know, different yeah. way. Taking but care of her baby sister. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. She still does very much so. <laughs> and I'm sure as they become teenagers, you know. Oh yeah, again, uh, yeah. I like me still, and my siblings. Yeah. There's still plenty of of sibling rivalry fights, but for the most part they are still each other's best buds they still like uh, to hang out together so awesome. we lucked out we talked about certainly about donations and the, the need for pediatric cancer research uh, earlier in our conversation this morning and one way you've done that and you mentioned yeah, how uh, you haven't been able to do as many events throughout the pandemic is by holding events one thing you've done the last couple of years earlier this year and and last year was the the 24 hour pedalthon yeah. uh, which which is all kinds of fun and then certainly upcoming with the 225k but just to revisit the the pedalthon for uh, for a second year i know you did it you did it last year um weren't physically prepared enough uh, to do it this year uh, after a battle with covid last year yeah. so but t- tell me how how some of these events came to be the pedalthon first and then um, anything else that you have typically do yeah, well, you know, 2020, we realized we couldn't do our galas, we couldn't do our in-person events. We're like, okay, time to pivot. At the time, I was obsessed with Peloton, bought it like most of other people <laughs> sure. at the beginning of the pandemic, um, was totally addicted to this bike and uh, just suggested to my team, you know, what if we do something where, you know, we have this ride and we have people, you know, sponsor different hours or, you know, we were all just chiming in, talking about it. Um, in the end, we decided, um, well... <laughs> I said, I'm going to ride the bike for 24 hours and, <laughs> you know, just to see what kind of attention we can get on that because right. that would trans, you know, transition into donations. Oh, yes. Um, and wow. Yeah. I mean, we weren't sure what it would end up raising. Um, my VP, Jim, was actually supposed to do that 24 hours with me that first year. So that was in uh, January of 2021. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, he was actually diagnosed uh the November prior uh, with lung cancer oh boy. and non-smoker um, and had to have surgery. And so he wasn't physically ready to join me. So it was just me that first year. Um, and we ended up raising about $85,000 in oh, a very short Amazing. amount of time um, with the help of our incredible team who was, I was on the bike, but they were pushing it on the other <laughs> end, um, you know, getting it out there on social media and everything. So um, of course we were like, okay, we have to do this again, Yeah, you know? So we did it um, this past uh, January uh, and this time around, Jim was able to do the oh, ride. That's great. Um, and we were also joined by uh, one of our childhood cancer families, the mom, Chris Teen Doviak from um, Tom's River. Yeah, from <laughs> Tom's River. Uh, incredible, incredible uh, woman. Her daughter Karina also had leukemia and is healthy today. Um, so the two of them, they rode their bikes for 24 hours, um, and we ended up raising just over a hundred thousand dollars. It's awesome. So it's pretty, yeah, pretty great way to pivot when yeah. you can't do your in person. And you had some fun conversations that you were doing, like the Facebook lives and everything yes. on there, kind of yes. talking to the girls and yes. you know keeping everybody motivated and everything. So that that must have been fun too through uh, oh, yeah. for you. That um, was important for us to make sure, even that first year. Like, oh I, yeah. We, we wanted to do it um, live because I didn't want people to wonder 
is she really on her bike at three in the morning? <laughs> right, exactly. You know, for all those night owls, I wanted them to this. be able to. Yeah, <laughs> that's so yeah. smart. Yeah. I wanted them to be able to pop on and be like, "Oh my God, she's still on her bike." <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> she's still there, and you know, wee hours of the morning. We only had a few viewers that we could tell, you know, on Facebook, <laughs> sure. but um, but there was always somebody, you know, or somebody texting my phone like, "I see you." <laughs> <laughs> Keep pedaling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was fun for me to watch Jim and Chris. Uh, do it this year. Awesome. Uh, I was a little bummed at first that I couldn't oh, sure. join them, but honestly, it, it almost felt more right that mm-hmm. you know it was their first year and it was just the two of them. And they are both just such remarkable people, and I was so so proud of them. Um, so it was fun. It was fun to be on the other end. Well, it was so smart too. I mean, during the pandemic, having an event like that being out there and because we were all You're challenged there was no yeah. yes. physical Virtual. places to have events, but yet put it out there. Would you say Facebook Live? Yeah. You did it. Congratulations on that. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. One of the uh, the other events that you so uh, wonderfully teased, that was a great tease, <laughs> first segment. I can't get over that. You're, Andrea's a natural for radio, so, you know, if you want a show here. <laughs> Except for rambling. <laughs> you have the 5K Tutu tra- Run Walk coming up Sunday, yep. June 12th to okay. help raise money for childhood uh, brain tumor research. So... Again, and kind of like the the pedalthon in January, so it'll be taking place uh, here at Middletown, and then with, with Jim up in Trumbull, Connecticut. Mm. So, uh, what is this? Uh, how did this event all come to be? And what are some of the things that people could look forward to in, in terms of signing up and everything? Yep. So, you know, like anything, this has a little bit of a backstory. Ah, there we go. Here yeah. we go. So, um, our VP, Jim McCaffrey, um, he and his wife actually created this event in Trumbull, Connecticut, before I even knew them, uh, in 2016. Their daughter, Mia, who was in kindergarten at the time, uh, was diagnosed with rhabdomyosarcoma. Ironically enough, one of her classmates... Um, I I can't say her name, but she was diagnosed with Wilms tumor prior to Mia. In fact, that's how I met the McCaffreys, because this other family was one of our infinite love families. And when Mia was diagnosed, they said, hey, believe it or not, one of her classmates uh, was also diagnosed with cancer. Can you help them, too? And that's how I originally connected with the McCaffreys. Um, So they had organized this 5K tutu trot to not only raise um, some money to help their family and this other family, but to also bring the community together uh, in another way to support them and to raise awareness. So they did that again before I even knew them. Um, About a year later, 2017, uh, Mia passed away. At that point, I was very close with the McCaffreys because I'd been, you know, um, just connected to them for a little bit of time then. And shortly after Mia passed, you know, there they were doing this tutu trot again. (laughs) And Jim said, you know, we want to give 100% of the proceeds to Infinite Love. Mm. I was just blown away by that. So um, they did. You know, they raised, I forget how much money they raised that year. Maybe it was about 30000 Oh, wow. Donated it to Infinite Love. And it was shortly after that event in 2017. And I said to Jim, I was like, listen, I can tell you are not going to stop fighting Mia's fight and you're already doing so much for our foundation why don't you join our team Mm. Um, and he did and so that following year in 2018 the tutu trot became the infinite love tutu trot ah there we go yeah (laughs) yeah and um, and we've been doing it since but it's always been a Trumbull uh, event it hasn't been in Middletown Um, so 2020 just prior to COVID we were like okay why don't we do this in both locations now this will be the first time we do it in Middletown Um, and at that same time, my dear friend, Sue Funk, she is the president and founder of the Hannah Duffy Foundation in Tim Falls, New Jersey. Ah, there we go. She's been a friend of mine uh, since 2013. Um, and she lost her daughter to cancer in 2013, mm. to brain cancer. Every year since uh, her daughter, Hannah, was diagnosed, she had a race, and it was called the Hustle for Hannah uh, 5K. Oh, nice. And again, like Jim and Marion, uh, that first year it was to help their family. But after that, everything that they raised went to the Children's Brain Tumor Network out of the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Okay. Um, so in 2020, you know, Sue and I were talking and she's like, you know what? I, I'd i love to join forces with you. Um, nice. So we kind of merged uh, her hustle for <laughs> Hannah into the tutu trot. So here we have, you know, these two amazing families who were affected by childhood cancer in the most horrific way, wanting to come together to make change 
for other families. Um, it's just, I mean, it's pretty incredible. And especially, you know, for um, Sue, who was dropping the name of her event that has her daughter's name in it to join forces with us because she knows together we're stronger. Then COVID happened. Right. Yeah. We couldn't do, you know, in person at either location. So we pivoted to virtual and we still, you know, we're very successful. Um, I think that first year that of 2020, we give 40,000 to the um, Children's Brain Tumor Network in Philadelphia. And then just last year, uh, it was 75,000. Nice. So this year, finally, back in person. Back. There we go. We're back. Yeah, we have <laughs> um, in-person race in Trumbull, Connecticut. And then we also will have, as you said, the in-person race at um, High School South in Middletown, New Jersey. And they're going to happen simultaneously. We're again hoping to do Facebook Live and connect. Nice, nice. So that Very Jim and nice. I can talk while both are both are going on. <laughs> That's great. And yeah. for anybody outside of the area who, who has family outside the area, Area, we want to continue with our goal during those virtual times of having virtual runners and walkers from every state. We've oh, cool. only gotten in the past couple of years 46, 46 of the 50 states. <laughs> okay. So Who's holding out? Yeah, I exactly. Know. I want to write this down here. <laughs> I think some of middle America where we had a hard time connecting to. Okay. So uh, we're also hoping to get all 50 states. So I think right now I haven't checked it in the last week, but I want to say we're probably at like 15 states. So we got a ways to go, okay. but we have a month. Yeah, we, so we, got, we got some time. Yeah, yeah. So please go on to our Facebook page, Infinite Love for Kids Fighting Cancer, and we'll have a map and you can see what we have and what we don't. You know, if you have friends or family in any of those states, we need Alaska, we need Hawaii, um, <laughs> you know, text your friends and be like, hey, sign up for this virtual race so this lovely foundation can check that off their list. Awesome. So we're nice. going to have all three components. There we go. Yeah. Um, and just quickly, where can people go to to sign up for uh, the 225K um, Sunday, June 12th? And, and how can they donate either before or during or after? Yep. You can go right to our website, infiniteloveforkids.org. Um, you can also get there via our Facebook page. You can you know, make a one-time donation. You can sign up to be a monthly donor. Hint, there you hint. go. No. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you can sign up for our race. Both events are going to have a family, you know, a kids fun run after okay. the 5K. Nice. We have, you know, kids things, face painters. Um, we're going to have a DJ. So it's definitely going to be ah, ah. a fun time. Bust so, a move. Yeah. yeah, bring the family <laughs> out. It's, you know, but it's also a um, certified um run you know so okay. for people who are looking to just run to get their times sure you know come sure. on out yeah, you know works. the more we can get the better our goal is a hundred thousand dollars for the cbtn and you know that's Let's a hefty happen. goal yeah, you know absolutely. and that kind of brings me to one more thing the sponsors okay we're kind of running out of time for sponsor i mean sponsors can sponsor us up to the day of the event just like you know people can register to run all right yeah up, all right up until the day of the event um, however, if they would like to be included um, on our T-shirt, then mm -hmm. the cutoff for that to have their commitment is um, and the commitment and logo is next or no, this Friday, the 13th. OK. Yeah. Okay. So we'll accept right. sponsors, of course, at any moment. But if you're out there and you would like to sponsor, reach out and uh yeah, just commit and send us our logo. There Your you logo, sorry. <laughs> Andrea, thanks for joining us this morning to talk about infinite love for kids fighting cancer. Um, Natalie's battle with cancer, the the, the whole your um, impact, the, the whole family's effort in, in that during that time and everything that you and Jim and everybody has been doing with infinite love for kids fighting cancer in the last few years and the work that you continue to do. Please continue to do all that great work and everything. Oh, well, thank you. And thank you guys both oh, for your support. You. I mean, something as simple as having us on your show helps us spread the word. So we couldn't do this without you guys. I genuinely mean that. So thank you. <laughs> You're too kind. Thank you so much. Always welcome back here anytime. And, and happy Mother's Day again. <laughs> happy thank you, Mother's thank Day. you. Thank you. I'm going to go eat a lot with my family. Enjoy. There you go. <laughs> and, and for if, you know, Hannah and, and um, Natalie out there listening, Give your mom a nice Mother's Day. Oh, thank you. <laughs> More short time with Vin and Dave after this. Hi, this is High Performance Executive Coach Dana Cavalia and former Director of Strength and Conditioning for the New York Yankees. And you're listening to Shore Time with Vin and Dave on 94.3 The Point and 105.7 The Hawk. It's always great to hang with champions, and these two guys are champions. 
Let's face it, investment concepts and financial planning can be very intimidating and confusing. Shoreline Wealth Management addresses that feeling head on. Their goal is to educate you while offering financial advice without buzzwords and jargon. Shoreline includes you in the process and makes you comfortable every step of the way on your path to financial freedom. Shoreline Wealth Management is your financial anchor. Visit ShorelineWealth.com for more information today. Shoreline Wealth Management with offices in Manchester and Manahawkin. Securities offered through LPL Financial member Fin. SIPC. Welcome back to Short Time with Vin and Dave. Vin Avenue, Dave Crossing with you here at the end of our Mother's mm. Day show. Good show, and buddy. Dave, it, it indeed was a great one. Lori Pepinella, Hour One with the Southern Ocean Chamber of Commerce, talking about all the things going on in LBI and Southern Ocean County this summer. And then Andrea Verdone Gorsigner, the founder of the Middletown based Infinite Love for Kids Fighting Cancer, talking about the nonprofit, the foundation. And they have their, their 225K run and walk coming up Sunday, June 20th. 12th check out their facebook page for the latest updates there so dave great show today and, and andrea a mother as well here wow. on mother's day what, what an amazing story and i think we have now a new co-host does she not have energy or, i mean that was <laughs> i'm like wow this is good yeah, she'd be you great know, to have um, back no amazing story her energy and what she mentioned about her daughter and her daughter's strength through all of this you know here's a child going through all these treatments and, you know, she's looking at her daughter like, wow, you're an inspiration. Yeah. Children are an inspiration. They're going through this and being able to handle it. It's just an amazing story. And with everything that they're doing with the nonprofit, the different events, bringing out the awareness. Um, and so impressed and, and so much looking forward to you running, my friend. I think we should both run, <laughs> right? Get the two twos yeah, ready. Done. Listen, we want to help in any way we can and thank Thank both guests for being uh, part yeah, of the show. Yeah, certainly helping yeah. get the word out. I mean, we'll, infinite love for kids fighting cancer, but we'll also, what I'll do, I'll, I'll put, post out all the information in an article by tomorrow morning that everybody out there can check out on our app and website as well. And we'll post out all the information where you can learn more about infinite love for kids fighting cancer and their upcoming 225K trot and walk. Dave, we got another good show on deck. Ooh, it's a goodie. Next week it's as well. A so like we said, we're going to continue with our Jersey Shore theme here at least one or two guests every week and you know next week our uh, one of our guests is works at a place where you could visit this summer okay you know dave lions tigers and beers there it is. well done i like if that. if you know okay. you know if you don't well, well you'll find out next, next week. week you'll find out and our other guest knows this a good. thing or two about rock and roll more than a thing or two. I am so <laughs> excited for next week. It's going to be an amazing so we've show. We've got two great guests coming up next week. And then when you let everybody know with the article, what about Wednesday? Yeah, people when, are Wednesday going night. to be like, wow. Yeah. Wow. We got, we got two really good ones coming up next week. Give you something to do this summer. And, uh, well, possibly two things to enjoy this summer, really, with both our guests. There it is. They, they both got things to uh, to do this summer. So A lot to do. We'll keep you posted during the week on our app, our website. Email us, shorttime at townsquaremedia.com. Um, Dave, have a great Sunday. Absolutely. Happy Mother's Day out yes, there. Yes, yes. Have a great Sunday out there, everybody. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms, grandmas, godmothers, stepmothers, all those of maternal influence. Have a happy Mother's Day. And all the kids out there, make sure you make sure you do something nice for your mom today. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Love you. More short time with Vin and Dave a week from now, 94.3 The Point, 105.7 The Hawk. Till then, we're out. Good things. Hi, this is Christy Pierce Rampone, former U.S. women's soccer team captain, Olympic gold medalist, World Cup champion, and Point Borough High School alum. And you're listening to Short Time with Vin and Dave on 94.3 The Point and 105.7 The Hawk. Tune in for some real conversation with Dave and Vin. You don't want to miss this.